This is the Keystone stove. This is a basic top lit updraft stove, a tea lut if you will, where the fire is lit on top of the fuel and allowed to burn down to the bottom. This increases the stove's efficiency and reduces the uh, emissions quite a bit. There's very little smoke if the wood is dry. And the end byproduct can be charcoal. So this stove is designed with these things in mind. First of all, inside the stove sits a fuel container, which is a five-gallon bucket. It has holes placed in the bottom for the air to come up through the primary air inlet, this red inlet at the bottom. And this is after the wood has been burned, and the byproduct, in this case, is charcoal, which can be used for a multitude of purposes, for running car engines, to running a foundry, for biochar in the garden, to uh, controlling odors and sanitation and filtering water. Immensely useful material. And this is actually carbon that was in the atmosphere probably no more than 20 years ago. That is now in the form of charcoal, which if put in the ground, sequesters that carbon for thousands of years. So this is the basic fuel canister. This is one thing different about the Keystone stove is that it contains a fuel canister that is loaded with materials to be burned. Mostly I use wood, but you can use corn stalks, corn cobs, um, sunflower branches, goldenrod, any dry material that can burn. Of course, the denser the material is, the longer the fire lasts. So, some unique things about this uh, Keystone stove. A fuel canister that is removable. Uh, it has a, a, a chimney so that the emissions that are created can go outside. Most of your tea lights do not have that. So this means it can be used indoors. Um, it, it, it's taller than most tea light stoves and this is designed so you can actually stand up and cook over top of it. It has a large cooking surface as you notice here. Now most of the heat is directed right in the center of this plate, uh, which is fine for boiling, but if things get too hot, there is no way to really control the heat of a tea lead stove very quickly. So by simply moving something off to the side, you can either keep it warm or cool, allow it to cool down and then bring it back. It also has a removable stove plate in the center, as you can see here. And that allows the flame to have direct contact with the bottom of your pots, should you need a lot of heat. It also allows you to look into the fire and see how the wood is burning, and it may need poke to help bring some of the unburned pieces from the side of the fuel canister to the center to be burned. It'll also help you see when it's time to uh, put the lid on the charcoal and allow it to go out. So, the Keystone stove has a primary air inlet, which allows the air to come into the bottom of the fuel canister. Fuel canister, of course, being filled with a carbonaceous material, in this case, wood. And the fire is lit on top, and as it burns down, it gives off gases. And those gases combine with the air coming in the secondary uh, air inlets to allow that gaseous material to burst into flame and burn cleanly. There's very little smoke with this system, especially once it gets warmed up. There is no creosote problems in the chimney, but you must use dry material, 20% moisture content or less. So here, let me show you how to load it. Opening the lid shows you the inside of the Keystone stove. Basically, there is a ring at the bottom which concentrates the air into the bottom of the fuel canister. The fuel canister is lowered into the Keystone stove, and there are guides that help center it onto that 
combustion ring. Then you need to light the fire. To do that, you can put, uh, some people use methanols, you could use diesel fuel. I'm going to use a couple of one of my favorite fire starters, which are white pine cones. But before I light that, the concentrator ring goes on top. This sets on some supports. And what this does is it forces the fire to come up through this concentrator ring and mix with the oxygen coming in from the secondary air intakes allows it to combust in this area and then this baffle helps make the flames come up and over before going out the flue. Adding the match to these pine cones. The pitch, of course, helps get the fire going very quickly. And in no time at all, we will have this fire burning. By closing the lid now, all the smoke will be directed up the chimney. Well, here we are about five minutes later. You can see the fire burning down in there. And we'll just take the uh, stove lid off and you can see how it's starting to burn and how the flames very clean burning so we can leave the stove lid off and we can uh, put our pot of water on uh, this is a pot with about two gallons of water in it uh, the fire in there using hardwood maple ash will burn about an hour and 45 minutes before finally uh, turning into charcoal and that's about enough time to heat this two gallons of water to a boil. Of course, we have a large surface area here, so you know we could put some other things on the stove to start warming them up. But for right now, the air inlet at the bottom, the primary air inlet is wide open, and so is the secondary air. Generally, these don't need much adjustment. But to slow down the fire, you can do so by actually closing off some of the primary air. So we'll take one more look in here before we step back and uh, burning very nicely, very cleanly. Well, here we are, half an, or 45 minutes into the burn, and this two gallons of water is getting ready to boil. It's about up to 200 degrees, so it'll be boiling pretty soon here. Uh, let's just slip the pot aside. Ooh, hot handles. But you can see the flames down in there. Uh, fire's looking very good. We can actually use our poker, which comes with the stove, and actually feel around the sides where the wood hasn't quite burned as well because it's, the sides are cool and of course the fire starts at the center. But you see most of the flames and the uh, sparks then go up the chimney. And we'll just slide the pot back over and keep our heating. Now if I want the, the fire to last a little longer I could shut down the primary air inlet that would give me a little longer burn, although it may not be quite as intense because there's not enough oxygen getting in there as when it's wide open. So let's come back in a few more minutes and probably about another half hour and we'll see what it looks like when it's time to shut it down and make the charcoal. So here we are. This will be about an hour and 15 minutes later. Uh, the water boiled, but now it's starting to die down. And if we move the pot aside, we can see now the fire has pretty much died down. The, the yellow flames are gone. It's replaced with this nice blue flame. All of the wood now has been turned into charcoal. So we're going to save that charcoal by shutting down the Keystone stove. If we wanted to keep boiling and keep boiling this water, we'd simply add another fuel canister with fuel, light it, and keep going. 
So here's the shutdown procedure. Remove the pot. Open the lid. Use the poker to hook onto the concentrator ring and lift it out. Then using a lid, this is lid is just simply placed over the hot charcoal. Helps to have a pair of gloves on here. Just move the lid over. Grab the bale, which happens to be very hot, with the poker and just lift the entire unit out of the Keystone stove and set it in a tight cover so that the air can't get to it and as that cools down of course the charcoal will go out. Stove's now empty, it's still hot. We could add another fuel canister and keep boiling or just let it shut down. But for more information on the Keystone stove go to PA Charcoal dot com and thank you